Uh, control panel utilities. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the various control panel utilities uh, that we cover on the A-plus exam to make sure you understand how they work uh, and where you access them from. So the control panel is the main location that we use to adjust our hardware and user interface settings in Windows. Uh, on Windows XP, Vista, and 7, they all share a lot of the same control panel utilities, such as the internet options, display, user accounts, folder options, system, security center, firewall, and power options. On the top I have a picture of Windows 7 and what the control panel looks like. As you can see they group multiple options underneath certain headers. Uh, in the bottom we have Windows XP which is more of the traditional view uh, where each one is its own individual icon. First one we talk about is internet options. Uh, this is where we adjust our browser configuration that affects uh, Internet Explorer. And we can adjust the method used to connect to the internet, including our dial-up or LAN-based proxy services and security settings. Um, we'll actually play with this a little bit in one of our labs, uh, where we go and we can actually configure things like our home page. Right now it's set to Microsoft.com. We might change that to Google.com if we like to open up Google every time we start our computer. Uh, if we go into the connection setting, which is the fourth tab there, uh, excuse me, fifth tab, uh, that's where you can change things like the dial-up or the land-based proxy settings as well. Um, there's also security functions and privacy functions in here, whether or not you're going to accept cookies, uh, whether you're going to trust certain websites or not. And we'll play with that during our labs as well. <sighs> display. Our display is used to adjust the resolution of the display and change our text size or other options related to our monitor. <clears throat> Normally we use the smaller setting, which is 100% or our default. If you're an older person and you want to have a larger text size, or somebody who has bad vision, you can actually go into the medium, which is 125%, or larger, which is 150%. Uh, my father, for instance, has a hard time with his vision, so I set his computer up to the larger size, so it's very large for him to be able to see it a lot easier. You also can go in here and adjust your resolution of your monitor. So we talked about that back in our display chapter. And you can see that button up there that says Adjust Resolution, or we can even calibrate the color and make sure that we are using the proper 32 or 24 bit settings. Most of our options are found here uh, or in the personalization uh, button down in the lower left corner where we can configure our monitor and our visualization details. So changing our display settings, the resolution or the personalization for things like our backgrounds. User accounts. This is the graphical user environment where we can actually create user accounts from and we can create, rename, and delete our users here as well as change or remove or add a password for Windows. Um, all of our user accounts are set into one of four groups by default. They're either a guest account, a standard account, a power user, or an administrator. And we'll talk about more those a little bit more later when we get into security. We'll talk about these four different account types. Um, just like I showed you under computer management, you had the user and group set, session uh, settings uh, where you can do a lot of very in-depth things for your user accounts. Here is more of a user-friendly area uh, where you can do it as well. If you're an administrator, you're tending, you're, you will tend to use the one under computer management a lot more than you will this one because you can affect multiple users much more quickly. Here you have to go into each user, change the setting, and then go back to the previous user. The other one you can get switch between users much more frequently. Folder options. So folder options is where we can uh, change our display options for our various files and folders in the operating system. Um, again, from here we can hide file extensions, we can hide system files, we can hide the system directories, we can hide uh, hidden files, and we can change all of that from the folder options like we talked about in one of our previous lessons as well. System. So if you click on System, what you'll see is the details of the computer. You'll be able to find out, am I running a 32-bit or a 64-bit version? So for instance here, I have a 64-bit operating system running. And it tells you how much memory you have installed, in this case, 2 gigabytes. What kind of processor you're using, what version of Windows you're running. All that information is in this area, uh, as well as your computer name and your work group name. There's also links down the left side for the device manager, the remote settings, which allows people to remotely connect and assist you with your computer, or set up remote assistance, system protection settings, or advanced system settings. All of those are linked straight from this page. The Security Center, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, it's used to check the status of several security essential uh, elements that are essential to your computer's well-being, such as automatic updates, firewall, and virus protection. This here, this is actually a picture from a Windows XP machine 
Um, and we had three basic areas that we covered, which was firewalls, automatic updates, and virus protection. In Windows Vista and Windows 7, we also added to that backups, because backups are essential for your data. If it's green, such as these, all of them are on, they're green, it's acceptable. If it's yellow, like maybe the virus protection hasn't been updated in a week, that might turn yellow. Or red means it really needs action right now. You haven't backed up your computer in three weeks, it might be a red item. The Windows firewall, you can get into it from that area or from the uh, system and security area under control panel. Uh, it's going to give you that firewall that's provided by the operating system to prevent hackers and malicious software from gaining access to your workstation. We talked about this previously as well. It's aimed at home users. Okay? There is the advanced firewall that's aimed at, at business users as well that goes much more in depth and you can access that from here by, by clicking on the advanced settings. Power options, this is where you can control your power management for a workstation or a laptop. When do you want to turn off the monitor? When do you want to turn off the hard disks? You can create your own schemes by, by setting those settings and then typing save, or clicking the Save As button as well. So you can give it your own name, like Jason's Laptop, and that way you always have your own custom settings. So each operating system has its own specific items. Um, a lot of these you don't have to worry about specifically. Um, but there are a couple I do want to point out. So under Windows XP, one of the big ones to note is printers and faxes. You can remember this is for XP because you can always remember Windows XP is old, fax machines are old. So printers and faxes is XP. When we went to Vista, notice that printers and faxes simply became printers. Okay? When we went to 7, we added printers and devices um, instead of just being called printers. So you'll see that come up in the test where you have printers and faxes for XP, printers for Vista, and printers and devices for 7 because they consider things like uh, digital cameras, scanners, and printers all in one lump bundle by being printers and devices. Uh, in Windows XP, we have the add and remove programs. Okay, This is how you would actually add or remove a program. So if I installed, say, Microsoft Office and I want to get rid of it, I go into add or remove programs, I click on it, and then I hit the remove button and it will uninstall that piece of software. In XP we also had the network connections area. This allowed us to create, edit, or delete local area network and dial up connections. So if I need to create a VPN tunnel, I could do that through here by clicking on the create a new connection and following through the wizard to create that dial up connection or that IP connection. Again, in XP I said we had the printers and faxes why do we have printers and faxes? Because faxes are old and XP is old. Okay? Keep that in mind. Uh, this is where you can add, set up, configure, and remove printers or fax machines uh, from the machine. Automatic updates. With XP, they introduced a thing called automatic updates where you could configure Windows to automatically download its updates. And you could set it up something like every day at 3 a.m., you want to download it automatically and install those updates. So that way your computer is always up to date with the latest security patches. It's a really good thing to do from a security standpoint. <laughs> um, network Setup Wizard. So it's used to configure all of our workstations on a network to use one internet connection. Uh, you're not going to use this very often anymore. Um, nowadays we pretty much just do a hardwire configuration. But back in the day, uh, you may, especially when XP came out in 2001, you may have had a single machine that had the dial-up connection to the internet and all the other machines that wanted to access the internet would go through your XP machine to get out to the internet. And so it was a way to share the connection uh, through everybody else or connect through a residential gateway, which is what you use with like a wireless access point with Comcast or, or Verizon. Um, again, this is an old XP thing. You're not going to see it much in the field. With Vista, we got rid of the word faxes and we just became printers. So everything in this is just printers. It's to set up, configure, and remove printers works just like the XP thing, except for the fact that we took away the word faxes. Vista and 7 both have tablet PC settings. Um, this was kind of mid-2000s up into the 2010s. Tablets were starting to get very big. A lot of the laptops had these things where they'd fold over and they'd have a touchscreen display and be able to use them from a tablet perspective. And so we got these configurations so that we can make those uh, changes whether we were right-handed or left-handed. Do we want it to be a landscape or a portrait when we, when we went into tablet mode? And how can we configure it or do handwriting recognition? These are all different settings you can configure underneath the tablet PC settings. 
first supported in Vista continued on in Windows 7 as well. Uh, Vista in 7 also has the ability to do pen and input devices. So if you're writing with a pen, like on a Surface tablet, do you want to be able to single tap to be a single click or double tap to be a double click? Uh, do you want to press and hold to be a right click? Things like that. And this is very useful when you have a tablet or an add-on uh, handwriting tablet device being able to configure those things. Offline files. So this was also first introduced in Vista and carried over into Windows 7. It provides users with an, a method of accessing shared network files and continue to work on them offline. So, for instance, if I have a small business and we're all in our small business and all of us connect to the server here while we're at work, we can use offline files. It'll keep a local copy on my machine. And when I go home at night, if I make changes, once I get back to work the next day, it'll upload those changes and synchronize them. So this makes it very easy for us to take work home with us and then bring it back to work the next day with those changes without having to maintain a constant connection online the entire time. Um, and that's one way that you can do it is through this offline uh, files. And one of the things you can configure here is the encryption ability and the disk usage ability. Disk usage might say, hey, I'm only going to allow 5% of my hard drive to hold these offline files. Because some servers you connect to may have two or three terabytes worth of files, and you don't want them all syncing up to your laptop because they'll overload your laptop. So you'll tell it what files you want and how much of it. Problems and reports and solutions. Uh, this is something that came up in Vista and carried on to 7 as well. It's a convenient way to manage any problem reports you find, and it will give you suggestions on how to fix the problem. Now, they're not always the best suggestions. They don't always work properly, but it is a best effort to try to give you some, some guidance in where you should go with your troubleshooting. So it's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, in 7, they introduced a thing called the Home Group. So if you see Home Group, remember that's a Windows 7 thing only. And what it's used for is to easily manage and secure small and small office, home office environments consisting of only Windows 7 or Windows 8 PCs. So we can connect them all together. It'll create this, it's almost like a work group, but it's a better, um, a better than a work group and gives you more security than a work group. Um, it allows you to figure out what you want to share, and it can actually encrypt that using a password as well inside the home group. Very easy to configure and very easy to use. But again, it only works with Windows 7 and above. In Windows 7, we also added the Action Center. And the Action Center provides numerous system management and troubleshooting functions in one single utility. Uh, things like your security with making sure your updates are done and your antivirus is up to date. Maintenance where your backup files are. So this Action Center keeps track of all of those things like your backups, your disk defragmentation, uh, your security, has some troubleshooting and recovery capabilities. Um, and again, that's found underneath the control panel in the Action Center tab. Number seven has remote apps and desktop connections. So um, in a lot of newer environments, we're starting to do what's called VDI, which is Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. And this is one of the ways that we connect to it. So it allows users to connect to a remote app program or a virtual desktop on a server and be able to, to use those. Your desktop, your home users and your desktop users are probably not going to use this very often. Uh, you're going to see this more in an enterprise environment if you're using virtual desktop infrastructure. Something like Microsoft Azure uses this. This is the way you connect to those servers. Um, we are not going to use that much. and We're not going to play with it in this class because we don't have a server set up to play with that. Troubleshooting. Um, one of the steps here is troubleshooting, and it will help you do some automated troubleshooting to try to fix problems with programs, hardware and sound, network and internet, appearance and personalization, or system and security features. And so if you're having some issues in a particular area, you can run programs for previous uh, windows. You can try to configure some devices and do some commonly used troubleshooting tips and tricks in this particular area. Um, again, this is something that was set up for home users so it can try to ease their troubleshooting process so they don't have to go to technicians as often. As technicians, you're probably not going to do a lot in this particular area, uh, but you may use it a little bit in your, in your troubleshooting. So here's a sample question. Which of the following control panel utilities will allow the technician to change the file type in a Windows XP machine. Will we use the folder options, the administrator tools, the accessibility options, or the regional and language settings? So if we're talking about file types, what do you guys think we're going to be using? Folder options, exactly. We're going to use the folder options, and in there we'll be able to change those associated file types. <laughs> 